Hey guys, CompSideGirl523 here, and we're back today with another tutorial. First things first, quick update. I am still working on my next SI file. I'm approximately about halfway done programming. It is taking a little bit longer than usual. I apologize. And as for streaming it, uh, the reason I haven't been streaming is because my internet would drop at random times. I figured out why that is going on, and I am currently waiting to get the part to fix my computer for it. So <laughs> once I get the part to fix it, uh, we'll be good to go. And yeah, so let's get started with this tutorial. So this tutorial is going to be about redstone circuits. Now, when you use command blocks, usually you don't think, oh, I have to use actual like physical redstone circuits because now you have the command blocks that are uh, chain, repeat, and you still have impulse blocks. However, there are cases where you actually have to make redstone circuits. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let's get started. All right, here we are. So first things first, I'm going to talk about kind of like the basics of redstone uh, for those who may not know some of the basics. Um, and then I'll go into more detail, more advanced stuff with uh, how you can use uh, redstone incorporated with your command blocks. So uh, basic things to know about redstone is that redstone can only travel or well, send power 15, um, 15 blocks. So for example, here we have you know there's 16 colors of wool in Minecraft. If this wasn't here, if this repeater wasn't here, it wouldn't send power. And I can show you if I turn on this. On the right hand side of the screen towards the bottom half of all of the uh, text on the right side, you'll see third from the bottom it says power. It can tell you how much power is being pushed through there. Uh, since you're at the 16th block, it has no power at all. However, if you add a repeater, it extends the power. Now, repeaters are not just used for extending power. Repeaters can have delays on them between one and four ticks. Um, a tick usually is equivalent to about a tenth of a second, if I'm correct. Um, it does sometimes vary depending on lag and such, so uh, keep that in mind. However, if I go over here, you can see I have each of these repeaters set to different uh, delays. One is set to this one here. When you just put on a repeater, it's a one tick delay. Uh, if you push back one, it's two, three, and four. And to show you how these work, I have a quick little thing here. Let me turn this off so you can see. You see how they all went off differently, and if I turn them off, shortest delay to longest delay. Um, another thing with repeaters, repeaters can also be able to have power pulled from a non-power block. How this works is traveling power through blocks. So, um, for this to work, you have to have a opaque block, so a block that is not considered transparent in Minecraft. For example, glass is considered transparent in Minecraft. If I were to turn this on, you see I powered the repeater. It does not need a delay. That was just an accident when I clicked on it, and no power goes through. However, if I do this one, since wool is an opaque block, you can actually send power through the wool. This is good in maps for when you want to send power through a wall and you don't want somebody to see what's happening. You could have like a button or something on this side and the repeater turn the other way and it will send power through the wall and no one will see it. So there's that's kind of like the basics of uh, repeaters. There's still one more thing with repeaters and that's locking repeaters. So repeaters have the ability to lock other repeaters. So you can actually have steady state uh, power supply. So, for example, if I turn this on, see it's on, I turn this on, you see it's locked. So even if I turn the power off, it will stay on despite the fact that there's no power behind it anymore. Now if I turn this off, you see it turns off, power turns off. Now if I didn't want somebody to be able to turn this on, even if this is flipped on, I'll turn this one on first. You can see it locks the repeater. If I do this, no power can go through at all. However, if I turn off the locking one, it allows power through. You've probably seen this in a few um, redstone puzzles. Usually you see this a lot, this mechanic being used. So now let's talk about comparators. So let me just clear my inventory real quick. Um, so comparators do kind of basically what their name suggests. They compare different power values. So for example, let me just grab all these items. Um, Comparators have two modes. They have comparing mode and they have subtraction mode. So I'm going to show you kind of like a basic example of each. So for comparing mode, you want to have um, a power source in the back. And you'll see if I do this, uh, power is 15. Now you want to have a power source on the side. Now, um, if the power source on the back 
is higher than the power source on one of the sides, it will allow power to pass through. Otherwise, you essentially block the signal. So if I do this, ignore the fact that that's there, you'll see power is still allowed through. However, if I were to move this back, you see if they match, they're fine. But if I get rid of that and do that, I end up saying that, oh, I can't allow any power through, and therefore it will not allow power through the comparator. Now, the other mode a comparator can be in is subtraction mode. Um, whoops. <laughs> this is something that you can use to kind of create a locking sort of system. So, for example, but in subtraction mode, right now it has no power going through. Um, actually, I'll put, whoops, put that there. You see power is zero. That is because what subtraction mode does is it takes the power from the back here and subtracts the highest power from the side. So this has power 15, this has power 14. You would get uh, 14 minus 15, that'd be negative 1, but since they don't use negative values, it just defaults to 0. Anything negative will default to 0. However, if I were to do that and that, we now have a power of 13. This is a power of 15 and 15 minus 13 is 2. So then you actually have power going through. Um, it will take the highest side. So if I had it so it was like this instead of 3. You see it has a power of 1 now because this is 15, this is 14, and that's 1 now. So that's the way you can use um, comparators in subtraction mode. So now we'll go on to items and containers. So Comparators can be used um, to test how many items are in a container, roughly. Um, different amounts of items default to different amounts of power coming out of um, a container. So, for example, take all this redstone here in my water bucket. For example, you have here, let me set this up. You have this cauldron here. If I put water in it, it gives me full power. If I were to get bottles, start taking the water out. I do that and that. You see power starts going down and completely turns it off. So uh, the first time this one, the way I have it set up, this one's actually powering this one as well. But um, let's see if I can re build this real quick to make it a little bit easier to see. Actually, I'll just turn these off. Do that. So if I put water in there again, power one, two, three. Now if I take bottles, power two, one, zero, power one, zero, zero and no power at all. So that's what you can do with cauldrons. Now, um, again, for containers, it varies how many items you put in there. You could actually, um, there is on the um, Minecraft wiki, there is like a table that explains um, how many items versus how many stacks you need to actually get different power levels. But for example, you can see if I put one stack in here, um, let me just do the same thing here, whoops. The reason this one's longer is because um, since this has more slots, uh, this one can give um, more power um, than versus a cauldron. It varies from object to object. Uh, you, again, this is all on the wiki. You can actually look this up and get all the values. There's just too many values to list here. So let me go like that just for now. So one stack will give you up to two power. Put another stack in, gives you up to four power, and so on and so forth. So if I fill this all in, and then I'll just do that, because that's going to bother me otherwise, it gives you a full 15 power. So, so that's items and containers. So now that's kind of like the basics of repeaters and comparators. We'll go on to some more interesting things you can do with these mechanics. Alrighty, so 
Sometimes when doing a map, you don't necessarily use the click to continue text um, prompt that I use in my maps. So uh, sometimes you want to have things like dialogue trigger in a row, like if it's a cut scene or something like that. In that case, you want to use a chain that uses delays in between. So in order to do this, I'm going to need this and this and that. All right. Um, first things you need to know is that if you do have a chain like this, you need to have either a repeater or a comparator in front of the first block in the chain. Otherwise, it will only trigger the first block. Um, if you don't want to have it right before it and you want to just trigger like that, then you need to have a comparator here instead of a repeater. You'll see because this had power 3, 2, 1, but you have to remember to reset this if you wanted to do it again. So uh, I'm just going to use repeaters for now. So as you can see, if I do that, 3, 2, 1 goes really fast. Now I, this is where the delays come in. You can put delays in, 3, 2, 1, slows the delay down, 3, 2, 1, etc., etc. So it's kind of like a basic chain of commands. You can have these do multiple different things. You can have command blocks on top of command blocks in the chain. So as long as it's an impulse one here, you can have like chain ones on top of it, triggering and such, and it will continue to go. As you can see, as long as there's power here, these are all powered. Otherwise no power. Um, also, as I mentioned before, there are three different types of command blocks. You have repeater, chain, and impulse. Um, and because of this, you have uh, basically a built-in clock mechanism with the repeater ones. Now, sometimes that clock is a little too fast for what you want to do. So you have to make a physical clock. So this is a physical uh, redstone clock. To start it, you simply place a redstone block or some other redstone source, and you see it's going pretty fast right now. Again, use repeaters. You could actually slow it down. You see how it's slowly slowing down. And these don't have to be all tuned to the same thing. You may want to delay smaller there. You could have command blocks here and here, and it's triggering command blocks in a sequence, stuff like that. So this is kind of like a general, like, small version of a clock. I'll turn that off. There's two ways to turn it off. You either can just break a piece of redstone, or if it was running, whoops. I'm trying to pace really fast in that. You could also just send a redstone signal to it and become solid state, and when you break it, it's stuck in a loop. Alrighty, now onto something a little bit different. So, if you watched one of my previous tutorials, I showed a way to test how many tasks a player has completed using, let me just, armor stands. Now, there's another circuit I mentioned that you can do that involves redstone. Uh, this is one of them. So, basically, I'm using the mechanic that you can lock repeaters. So, what you can do is, basically, I have these set up here as the tasks. So, let's say this is task one. Task one done, you see it triggers off here. It sets a glass block. And now power can flow through. through. Sorry about that. I have allergies, and they've been pretty bad lately. Um, then we have glass here. And you complete task two, and task three allows power through and all complete. Uh, now I'm just going to reset this really quick to have there. Again, you can do these in any order. So say I want to do task two first, did task two, then I want to do task one, task one, task three. Again, all complete. So that's another way you can kind of count how tasks are being done. You would just put something at the end of it that would be like um not say, but a uh, set block, and you set it to glass, and it'll allow, or any non-power blocks like wool. I tend to use glass just in case there is um, another set of uh, like command blocks or something near it. I don't want it accidentally setting off uh, this again. Um, that's just for, just something you can do. Um, and then another way you can do this is also with pistons. So pistons, usually you think of pistons as just mechanical pieces. They could actually be used as circuit pieces as well. So, for example, uh, let me just clear my inventory because I'm going to need to clear my inventory for this. Make sure it's something else. Nope. Alright, so here I have two test fours. This one's testing for a chest in my inventory. Turn that on. And this one's testing for a redstone block in my inventory. So say you wanted like a person to find these two objects because maybe the chest is like a lockpick kit or the redstone block is like a power source block that you need for a puzzle or something. So here I have the two objects. If I put the redstone in my inventory, you can see it sets this off. Now, let's say you didn't want to um, 
have it so that if the object gets removed from their inventory, they can still continue. So if I were to take this out of my inventory now, it resets it. So if I have a chest, it does it. If I don't have the chest somehow gets removed from my inventory, it doesn't work anymore. This comes in handy for puzzles. Uh, and then actually if I have both, doesn't matter what order I grab them in, it'll set it off. So this will come in handy for like puzzles. For example, maybe like either a person needs an object to get through a maze or something, but they can't go through certain parts of the maze or the object gets reset. This would be a way to say, hey, they don't have the object anymore, therefore stop the circuit. And again, I can stop the circuit again by just removing anything from my inventory. And there you go. So those are some redstone basics. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions as to what I should do next, uh, feel free to let me know. I still have that list of um, suggestions from previously that I'm slowly working my way through, as you can see. And, yeah, so that's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.